rolling. We might cut this out in case it's too boring, but uh, I've got some some new goo to go on my teeth mm -hmm. because they've applied the hooks to my braces to attach the rubber bands to oh. to hold my jaw shut because it's it's happening on Thursday, which <laughs> is in a couple of days. Yeah, so I've got hooks all around all my braces on my teeth and uh it really just digs into my lips but that's okay because i only have to deal with that for a few days uh before they before they just chop my teeth out and move them around you know those little chatter boxes that you see you know that's what they do they detach all of it and then he sticks his hand right in my mouth and goes Hello, <laughs> I'm going to make Lewis Spears handsome and so he can breathe. And they see how my teeth move and then and then they and then they get at the fucking the brackets and the nail gun and the drill and they go and bolt me back together like uh, Terminator. Uh, oh, sorry, is that is that a little bit hard to listen to? Wow. Hey, man, lucky it's not happening to you. <laughs> It's like Play-Doh in my teeth and if, and I have to wear it because they're, they're pointy, they're hooks, you know, to attach rubber bands to. Um, and whenever I talk to someone, they, they I just see their their eyes drift from my eyes down to my teeth and they go, does, does, does this guy know he's got dried cum in his teeth? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's finally here. By the time you all listen to this, I think this will come out on like uh, uh, Tuesday. Uh, I'm going under the knife uh, Thursday at like 2 p.m. Five, six hour surgery. Oh. Uh, overnight stay in um, uh, where, what's the hospital ward where, where you might die? ICU. In ICU, yeah. ICUP. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, and then, and then I might come home on Friday or the night after that. It depends on whether or not I vomit up all of the blood that'll be in my stomach. <laughs> Which is why you have rubber bands because they used to wire it shut. Keelan's covering his ears. <laughs> they used to wire your mouth shut, but if you spewed, you would drown Ugh. in your own blood that was in your stomach. So now you have rubber bands. How good's that? How good's science? I feel so sick. Yeah, I feel- Whenever you talk to me about this. Yeah, I feel, I uh, am, uh, I have, I'm choosing to be hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> I am choosing to be hopeful. I don't know, man. I'm just so fucking over it. I've had, you know, I, I knew this was going to happen in 2020. You can go and listen to Luke and Lewis podcast. So in, in 18 months, it'll be over for you. When was that? Four years ago. <laughs> but what I have been thinking about is obviously the surgery on and on, on, off again on a loop forever. Um, but another thing I've been thinking about is I just got this idea in my head uh, one one day because I remember the first surgery and anyone who's gone under uh, uh, general anesthetic will will know this. What happened? The process is you go into the hospital and you, they change your clothes. You get into the robe and they get rid of all of your equipment and they like sanitize the area that they're going to be working with. And as you go in, there's like six checkpoints where they basically just check you have what is required and that you actually need this surgery and that you've booked in for the correct one. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you have knee surgery, you'll on the way in, five different people will ask you which knee and then, you know, right knee, right knee, right knee so that they know they haven't written down on their paper the wrong knees, like normal shit like that. August 4th, 2020 is the first time you, you talked about this. <sighs> Bro, it would have been done. What is it? It would have been done in, if it was first spoken about in August, then yeah, it would have been finished by like the end of 2021. <laughs> Both surgeries. Yes. Anyway, they do like five checkpoints. And this is so important because sometimes they mess it up. And they, they like they do surgery on the wrong arm and they go, oh, fuck, there's nothing wrong here. And they've just done that to you for no reason. Like I know my friend who uh, he was going to get the, f the first surgery I had, the palate expansion. You have to get the expander put in first before the surgery. Um, and he got through all of the checkpoints, all five checkpoints, got to the point where they've hooked him up to, the, to put him under. And then the surgeon goes open wide. He didn't have the expander in. 
No one told him he had to have it put in beforehand and he made it through four, five checkpoints, almost gets put under. Like imagine if they put him under, they open his mouth and the guy goes, ah, fuck, send him home. (laughs) So they do that, right? And and the all I remember from the first one is just in being in the bed and I would just have like six different heads in different rooms as I get wheeled through, ask me all these questions like, how much do you weigh? How tall are you? What surgery are you getting? Why are you getting it? All that stuff, right? But uh, that's all very important. But then when you get into the actual operating theatre, then you have the surgeon, the anaesthetist, if they have any assistant nurses or whatever, and uh, there's kind of nothing to talk about. They're just kind of chilling and waiting for you to pass out. And it's just the anaesthetist asking you questions like, how was your day? And you're like, oh, I had a good day. And I remember, I think last time he goes, what did you have for breakfast? And I was like, oh, nothing, because I'm supposed to be fasting. He's like, good, (laughs) Uh, which is a great trick question, because if I had food, he'd have to send me home. Yeah. Uh, And then he goes, and then he goes, what is your favorite food? And I was like, oh, well, um, I I really like Japanese food. Uh, Like uh, I've been, uh, 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 (laughs) you know, that, that whole thing. Now I've, I had this thought, the other day, or actually, that's a lie. I had this thought months ago, and I keep having it every couple of days again of that little opportunity. You got about maybe 40 seconds where everyone's paying attention to just you watching to see if you're going to fall asleep. Now, I think that's a great opportunity to make everyone laugh. Mm. But you but you've, you can't really have a call and response thing. <laughs> You, you can't, like, I can't tell one of my jokes. My jokes are long. I don't have many one-liners. So I was thinking, like, how would I make someone laugh, mm. right? Now, I think I've got it. I think I've got, so, I've, I think I've got something that'll just crack the room because it has to be nice and short and it has to be very unexpected, which is what good jokes are. So for this, Keelan, I would like you to be <coughs> the surgeon. Yeah. And I'm... I'm like the anesthetic is being applied. So I'm fading. All right. And, uh, and I just want you to just, okay. Uh, ask me how I'm feeling. How are you feeling? Mr. Spears? How am I feeling? How are you feeling? Mr. Spears? Yeah, I'm feeling good. Um, Oh, just before I go under, I have a question. Yeah. Um, how, how long until, uh, I can safely have a girl sit on my face. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm under. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think, I think <laughs> that's funny because he wouldn't expect me to say that. Like he's about to just decapitate me and I'm thinking about pussy. That's a good one. Right now. Obviously, I reckon, do, do we agree that would make them laugh? Maybe. Depends who it is. Yeah. Like, the, the, depends if they have a sense of humour. I, I, I think you've got three people in the room. Surely I'm cracking. One of them's going to laugh. One of them. Okay. Well, let's. Maybe the anaesthetist. Oh, the anaesthetist, they'll laugh for sure because they're all, they're all actually insane. Yeah. I know that the anaesthetists are insane because I think I've said this before. Um, they don't work very hard. Uh, yeah, they just, they just sit there and fucking twist the knobs. You know, I mean, qu- quite literally, most heroin addicts <laughs> do their job, you know, on themselves mm. without dying. <laughs> you know, every now and then one of them goes a little bit overboard and has a real long snooze and doesn't wake up. Yeah. But but he's doing it to himself. So, g- you know, give him the credit that he deserves. And an anaesthetist is just like a really well-paid uh, heroin administer. Mm. Um, but... <laughs> I know that anaesthetists are all insane because after I got the first surgery done, I was uh, talking about it uh, publicly and I was talking about how much my, my, uh, my nose hurt. Yeah. Um, and I was like, oh, I don't, know. I don't know what they did, if they did something to my nose or if it's because my face changed so much my nose hurt. Uh, and, uh, and then I just got like a comment on one of the podcasts from like, you know, a YouTube username that's like fucking... Billy Boy, 1538, just like some random name and a bunch of numbers that said, uh, fun fact, 
your uh, your throat airway was actually so narrow that we had to put the breathing tube through your nose. Oh. That's why it hurt. <laughs> and that was 100% the anaesthetist. <laughs> because uh, I think that's also really illegal <laughs> to write. That's breaching patient confidentiality. But whatever, I thought it was funny. But strange. Anyway, imagine if he was, imagine if I was getting like uh, a dick surgery or something and the guy was like, fun fact, we had to put the catheter in your ass because your dick is so small. Like, I wouldn't want that out there. Anyway... <laughs> Now that we've established, let's just assume that the surgeon laughs, okay? He has a big chuckle. Um, is that something I want him to do <laughs> before he has to perform a surgery, you know? What if I make him laugh and then I go under and he goes, all right, team, let's begin. And then like two hours into the surgery, he thinks of it again, <laughs> has a little chuckle and, you know, cuts my ocular nerve. <laughs> my eyeball fucking falls out. <laughs> So, look, maybe that's just, I'll wing it. <laughs> See, I'll read the room beforehand and <laughs> let's just say this. If I die on that table, that fucking joke killed. It crashed. I probably won't die on the table. But if I do, you know that, I, that it's my fault because I made the guy laugh. Um, okay. How long do you think you are going to be kind of – I know you're recovering mm. for like eight weeks, but how long do you think it will take for you to become kind of conscious and aware properly, like be able to well, walk and text? I think it's going to be pretty similar to the first one. So after the first one, um, although it's an overnight stay, so maybe like just a, a day extra. So after the first surgery, as soon as I was woken up, because I didn't, I didn't know this, I thought you, you like just – the drugs just wear off and you wake up. They actually wake you up. They give you something that makes you come to. I didn't know that. So so they'll wake me up and then um, I think it was within maybe 30 minutes I was on my phone. I, was, I sent Jazz a, a video. I don't even remember doing any of this. I don't remember the first like two, three days, but I was using my phone a lot and <laughs> sending a lot of messages. So if you message me, Thursday, Friday, you'll get a response, but it's not from me. It was typed with my hands, but not my brain. Yeah. Um, but I sent Jazz a, a video of me filming my foot and, and I said, there's a dog in my bed. <laughs> it's going like this. And then they gave me ice cream. For, I don't know why. The Like within like 10 minutes of me waking up, I sent a video of my foot saying it's a dog to Jazz and then she goes, oh, it's time to pick him up. <laughs> She's on her way. They call her and she goes, yeah, I'm already coming. And they put me in this waiting room with all these other fucked up people who just got surgery. But I got faced, so I look fucked. Everyone else is like hiding a bad leg or a, uh, an arm or, or there's like a kid with wearing a cast. Like everyone else is, they don't look as fucked as me and I just get this feeling that everyone's staring at me. And then the nurse comes out and gives me ice cream. And, uh, and, I, and I was like, I remember thinking, I have to eat it. <laughs> I didn't want it. I wasn't hungry. I didn't want ice cream. But I was like, I, this is probably medicine. <laughs> and I just put the ice cream in my mouth and then I start choking on it because my mouth doesn't work and it's all numb. So I, so I put the ice cream in my mouth. I can't feel where it is. I have all the metal in there too, the expander, oh, and it's yeah. just been all cut up. So I don't know what's going on. And then I start choking on it and then it starts falling down my face. And then some other guy who's like off his head is like, uh, and calls over a nurse and she comes over. She goes, what's going on? Are you okay? And he just points at me and she sees me like drowning in boysenberry ice cream. And she comes and dabs at me and I'm like, ice cream. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> there's actually a fucking horrific video of me coming out that I've, I don't think I've even shown you that I'll show you after this because it's, uh, it's very funny. And it's just me dribbling ice cream on the floor. Um, so, I, so I think, yeah, like probably, probably straight away I'll be able to use my phone. Mm. I don't know if I should mm. be allowed, um, but... I think, uh, yeah, basically I'm going to disappear again for, for many weeks 
for for you guys. I'm going to st- I'll, I'll post on Instagram and stuff like little updates. I think even like the day the day I got out of the hospital, I just posted a photo of my face letting people know that I survived. So that'll happen, but I think in terms of like actually me posting shit, I'm just going to do it a lot better this time. Like last time I tried to turn me recovering from surgery into content and it was just such a bad thing for me. So this time I'm just going to you know, I'm just going to go away and I'm going to focus on healing and, and becoming well. I mean, you know, anyone who's listening to this who who is has been sick for a long time knows. You just can't fucking ignore it. And that's what I tried to do, you know, before the first surgery and then after and then, uh, then during and then after recovery. And then it just burned me out. So I'm just going to be sick, man. Like I'm choosing to be sick and, and to become healthy. But I think what will be really fucking good is this one actually makes me feel better. Like, even though I'll be swollen and in a lot of pain and all that kind of bullshit, I'm actually going to be cured immediately from what I heard from the surgeon and a bunch of the other doctors I've talked to and the woman that I spoke to whose husband got it done like five days before I spoke to her. She was, I was like, is he snoring? She's like, he he was breathing beautifully the first day, which makes sense because they just open the airway and then really the healing is not near, near your airway. It's just like your mouth and your chin. So, yeah, but this is the last podcast where you're going to see this face. This is the last time that you're going to see me looking at this. You as well, Keelan. You know, we might go out, get coffee or something, and you can just try and remember my head. (laughs) This is the, seriously, this is the last time. Look at that. Look at my profile. Look at my little baby chin. This is the last fucking time I'm ever going to do a podcast looking like this. Isn't that weird? Yeah. That's the thing that I'm, I guess, most nervous about is I don't know what I'm going to look like. They gave me some projections, which I might post, I might not. But you've seen them. They're just like 3D models of what they think I'll look like. But you can kind of tell looking at them, like that's not really how a face looks. Yeah. But you can understand yeah. what it would look like. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think of the difference that you've, you've seen in their projections? Uh, massive chat. You reckon? Yeah. Yeah. From what I can remember anyway. Yeah. I remember looking at it and going, who's this guy? Who is this guy? That's, that's what I'm, that's what I'm seeing. And you I, know showed, what? I showed, I yeah. showed Phoebe, my girlfriend yeah. and, and she was like, wow. Yeah. She was shocked by it. Which is why I've been telling everyone when I get my new chin, it's over for you because everyone's girlfriend's going to be like, wow. <laughs> yeah. The, I've got it here. If you yeah. Want it. Um, the side profile makes a big difference. The front profile makes you look. Yeah, bad. so we'll get we'll get you to um to to put it in. Uh, so the what the surgeon told me this is like a three D um, it's it's some a- algorithm or some AI is predicting what I'll look like with soft tissue because basically the surgeon he can tell me exactly what my bone is going to look like, my skull, my skeleton. He knows exactly what that'll look like down to the millimeter, but you put muscle and soft tissue and where that settles, it's a guessing game. So in this one, the top two photos, that is actually me. That's a 3D scanned model of me. So that's definitely me. The bottom is what they think I'm going to look like. Now that's a really strong jawline, but it's going to be even stronger in reality because in this scan, I'm actually, I actually have something in my mouth that's holding my mouth open, my jaw, really wide open. So uh, if you imagine this, but my mouth is closed, and he also says that my lips will be much more visible. They've kind of disappeared in this. So, yeah, it's a huge, huge difference, um, especially from the profile. Um, and it's, it's funny. Yeah, most, people, uh, most people are saying, wow, Chad, alpha. What a strong jawline. My mom's saying, wow, that's such a strong jawline. Greeley, I I sent it to him and he goes, you know what, bro? You're actually going to look quite staunch. (laughs) (laughs) You're going to look like a real staunch lad, bro. Um, And this is the, this is the bigger, I think this is really demonstrates the difference. This one, because you can see, yeah, because uh, it moves up as well. Like uh, they're getting rid of some of, some of the bone underneath my nose, but above my teeth. So it comes up. So my face, my chin doesn't get doesn't just get stronger. My face actually gets less long, which will give the illusion of width. Because um, uh, you know when you see like really handsome guys, like Henry Cavill, you look at his 
his head. Mm. It looks like his his uh, jaw comes out, like looks like it sticks out from his ears, and then he has like this big corner mm. here, and then his jaw comes straight forward. And I was asking, is that something that you do? Like it look wider? And uh, he, the surgeon said that's actually an illusion. What you're seeing is not width of this bit, like kind of where the hinge is. You're actually seeing sharp angle forward. It's like how a square looks more broad than a rectangle, even though they're the same width. If a rectangle looks longer, so it looks like the width is less, less than a square, that's going to be the illusion of my face. But also... Uh, because the swelling takes months and months and months to go down properly. The real bad swelling goes away in a month, maybe two months. But uh, everywhere I've read and what my surgeon has told me is I'm not going to know what I actually look like for about six or seven months. So, yeah, it's uh, who knows. But, yeah, I don't know. I have my jaw wide shut for for at least two, maybe six weeks. Depends on my healing. And we just went out to the chemist and we just spent a fucking ungodly amount of money on just equipment and vitamins and fucking bullshit. Like we have to, we have to buy sauce bottles. I'm buying like Heinz, empty Heinz sauce bottles for me to drink everything through because before I could get a spoon in, but this time with the rubber bands, I'm going to have to stick like the, the funnel in between teeth and squeeze in my food somehow. It's so fucked. It's going to suck so much. That's why I'm definitely not going to be posting as much with this time because I think I think uh I think it will be different to the first surgery in the first one. The first couple of weeks of recovery were not that bad. It, it it wasn't fun, but it wasn't that bad, but then the back 6 8 months that was horrible because of the expander. I think this one's going to be reversed a bit. I think the initial two weeks are going to be pr pretty rough, but then it's going to be smooth sailing. Although it might not even be that rough because I have OxyContin again. You know, I just like that shit. Having that made me go, why would anyone take this as a leisure activity? You just take it and you fucking disappear and fall asleep immediately. A spoonful of it. And meanwhile, people are trying to fucking have it for fun. It's like, what type of pain are you trying to escape from that you're like oh what should we do on friday night oxy content you've lost it um but my my biggest problem has not been the surgery okay obviously i, I had a much bigger problem this week um and that was uh the matildas playing their game of soccer now don't get me wrong all right i'm a huge fan of slow motion sports i always have been <laughs> what I always have everyone. Everything looks better in slow mo. That's why we have all those fucking cameras, the super high f fidelity, high frame rate cameras, yeah. the slow mo guys. Huge, huge YouTube channel. Oh, a balloon popping's cool, <laughs> but what about a balloon popping in slow motion? So I love slow motion sports. I always have, um, <laughs> but I don't like soccer. I don't like soccer, regardless of who's playing it. That's a lie. If I if if there was a game exclusively played by trans bitches, that would be exciting. Because because it would just be like what a spectacle. Okay? But I don't like soccer. I never have and I won't call it football. Sorry England. I know you beat us, right? But uh, but because the Matildas has been such a huge thing in this country. All right? I have found myself engaging with it, not because I'm proud of the Matildas or that I'm excited about soccer, just so that I don't appear to be a sexist pig. <laughs> That's all. Which is not why you should be watching sport. You know, great example of this. They play their, their, their game, all right? They lose. It was close. I hear, I hear for slow motion soccer, it was a great match. Okay, riveting. There were even some goals kicked. How good's that? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm being facetious. They're athletes. But <laughs> what's funny about that? I'm at the next day, right? So it's all in the news. I didn't watch a second of it. Not because it was slow motion soccer, but because it was soccer. All right, not interested. 
But the next day, I'm at the cafe and I'm and I'm fucking writing. I'm doing my shit, and uh, this 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 woman comes in. She's walking very slowly. She comes in the cafe and she just starts going, "Oh, the Matilda's lost." She's like some fifty year old woman now. Now, cynical me is. Shut up, bitch. You don't care about... You don't even care about slow motion soccer, all right? You just care because everyone else cared in this moment. And now that they've lost, you're never going to watch a single game of slow motion soccer ever again in your fucking life. Positive me is like, that's really great. I think that the whole country caring about, about slow motion sports is a really good thing for, for little girls everywhere. That's amazing, right? <laughs> um, but she comes in and she goes, oh, the Matilda's lost and the Matilda's lost. And, I, you know, I ignored it. I'm in my own world. I'm by myself. And then she sits down on the table next to me, right? And then a woman on the other side of me starts yelling over my table about the, oh, the Matilda's lost and oh, it was such a good game and they, they gave it a good shot and I, I can't believe that we came close to, to beating England. It was England. That's their sport, you know, which is amazing, right? And now I'm just like, well, I have to say something because otherwise they're going to think I'm sitting there. I'm the only man in the cafe and they're going to think that I was just sitting there going, oh, I don't want to watch women's soccer. That's women's soccer suck. Like I'm, I don't want to come across as a sexist pig. So I just go, ah, oh, it was a good game though, wasn't it? And then I got so angry at myself that I got in. Not only did I talk to a stranger <laughs> in a public place, I'm talking about fucking soccer. <laughs> if that shit would never, if this Australian team, the Australian men's team, right? Regular pace soccer. If they came close to winning the fucking... If they won the World Cup, I would not give a fuck. If they won the World Cup and two people either side of me were going, yeah, we won, I'd ignore both those cunts. But because it was two women and I'm sitting there, I didn't want to. I didn't want them to think, oh, look at this fucking sexist pig. He doesn't care about slow motion soccer. So I'm like, oh, yeah, it was a good game, wasn't it? You know what I should have done? I should have fucking pulled out a flare and thrown it at them. <laughs> like at Fed Squared. You see that? That was fucked. That was... Let the women have their thing, would you? Yeah, that's annoying me too. Let the women <laughs> have their fucking game. All right? They, they, they don't have any, like, popular sports where they, don't have to, where they don't have to get their fucking tits out. Let them have their fun. Fed Square should have been women only. Women and children only. That's so fucking soccer hooligan that, like, a bunch of, like, 15-year-old girls are seeing for the first time in their life, like, successful female athletes that are not only successful, because we've had those for a long time, but people actually give a fuck about them. And then a bunch of 25-year-old dudes are like, let's throw flares at women and kids. <laughs> Just fucking throwing flares, pushing over barricades. But also, again, that is soccer culture. So welcome to the game, ladies. You're in. So in many ways, if they didn't throw flares at a woman and get one of those flares in her pram... That would have been quite sexist, which is worse. My step family are from Africa, They're like a small African country. Oh, so they really would have cared. <laughs> well, when when or my, they would have gone, it's an abomination. Get when, them, get them off the field. When my dad started dating his partner, we went to the football. This was like fifteen years ago, like AFL, mm. and she was shocked that people were sitting next to supporters of the opposite team. <laughs> Yeah. She thought that yeah. that was outrageous because in, in her country, they they don't do that. You get separated and then one team one team supporters leave first and everyone else waits and then the second team is allowed to, to leave. To prevent riots. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Although that's like a regular day at the shops for an African nation, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and the old riot. Um, <laughs> yeah, soccer is... Uh, is is awesome i think uh <laughs> i would love it if if slow motion soccer was the only type of soccer that we cared about i think that's really cool mm -hmm. and i would love for it to get like super toxic but like i like because for um football in the uk or soccer here right mo mostly in, in in the uk or all over europe like just the most toxic male everything comes out during those games it's like name calling and and aggressive 
chants, you know, people fucking screaming the the girlfriends of names at the players and, and making fun of them. Or, uh, you know, there's this classic one of that I've seen. I don't know. I think I don't think it's a professional game. I think it's like an amateur league, but it's big, right? There's There's like thousands of people there. And they're having a minute of silence for like some kid who's died. And they get about 20 seconds into it. And it, and it must be like, I, I don't know, it might, might be a kid of one of the players or just someone involved with one of the clubs or a supporter of the other team. 20 seconds into it, dead silence. This child has died. One guy from the other side goes... He's in a box and then it's just a fucking riot. And then you hear this one guy, you just knew that was going to happen. You knew it was going to happen. And it's, and everyone's screaming and that's, and, and I would like to see like the, the, the woman version of that real, like just fucking real toxic female uh, bullying come out every time the slow motion soccer season comes around you know like the the girls get on the court and all of a sudden it's just like fucking the whole crowd you can just hear when there's a penalty shootout like men penalty shootout really important kick about to happen men will be just chanting singing songs i would love to hear like ten thousand women when the when one of the girls is about to <clears throat> try and kick a goal and penalty shootout you just hear ten thousand women go like spreading rumors about it, telling lies, you know, posting on their story, cryptic subtweets. That would be great. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a big supporter. Uh, I, yeah, I didn't watch a second. I haven't watched any of it, but I think it's cool, man. I think all these people are going, oh, you know, uh, like people are criticizing, oh, you didn't give a fuck about soccer before or or slow motion soccer before and now you care yeah. and it's like i think that's cool like it starts somewhere and it's and it's and it's not even about it's not even really about the players that are playing right now it's about the fucking nine-year-old girl who sees that and goes oh that's an option i didn't even know that women could do that or girls could play that and and then even also if she wants to do it there's actually a little league for her because there's so often there's there's I mean, every kid has that, a fucking, I would like to do this, and there's there's not even a thing in your local area. Mm. You know, like uh, Bill Gates lived close to a library that had a supercomputer. That is why we have Microsoft. If he lived in, you know, a few suburbs over, we may never have had Windows. Like, the reason why we have Windows is because he was close to an opportunity to be shit at computers mm. as a kid. And he would go there every day, and he figured it out, and now we have... Um, and now we have the fucking evil poison vaccine. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's yeah, it's like people are going, oh, you don't even care. It's like it's not even really about that. It's about just showing that these uh, these little girls have an option to become a fucking sports woman. I think it's awesome. So good on them. And also, Australia getting anywhere near the finals in any sport that isn't AFL is like fucking insane. Are we good at any other sport? Swimming. Swimming. Yeah. That's it. Cricket. Are we good at cricket? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> yes. Who, you know what? Who gives a fuck if we are, you know? That's another one. Like, like really, it would be like if, if, if there was a fucking slow motion cricket team. Like, I don't care about that either because I'm not watching the men's cricket. It's not something that's happening. <laughs> um, sorry. Women's soccer. That's what it's called. Um... <laughs> Anyway, what else? I wanted to talk about uh, <coughs> Doja Cat. So here's the thing. If I get in trouble for, for all of this stuff, mm. I'm going to be dumping so much OxyContin. <laughs> your words won't be able to hurt me because I won't be able to read them. I, <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't taken my, my medicine, my, my wakefulness shit, the armadaphanil. I've been off it because uh, it hypes me up and I'm like, if there's any time that I should slow down and rest... It's like the two weeks before my surgery. So I haven't had it for like two weeks. Bro, I'm so fucking stupid. I have become so slow and unobservant and I can't retain anything. Like it's it's all, I've been reminded of how, how like even like put aside, oh, I feel tired, I'm sleepy, whatever. This shit makes me so fucking stupid. <laughs> it's so dumb, the lack of sleep. I was watching Sopranos and... Five times in a row, 
30 seconds after something happened, I went, oh, he was doing that. It was in his bag. And Jazz is going, yeah, idiot. That was obvious. Like this is just a, a scene where he fucking, he carries a bunch of money in a bag. And I see that and I go, oh, he brought him lunch. <laughs> and Jazz is like, are you stupid? And I'm like, I think I am yeah. for the moment. <clears throat> You're very different when you're not on I'm a Daffodil. Good or bad? Uh, just the same as like what you're saying, just slow. Yeah. Like it's very noticeable when I walked in today. <laughs> just a dumb cunt. Just, yeah. Yeah. Slow. It's, yeah, it's, it's true, man. My brain works really fucking slowly. Like I watched an entire, yeah, I watched an entire episode of Sopranos. And upon reading the summary of the episode, one of the simplest ones that they've, <laughs> Like there was no mystery. <laughs> it was just like a, almost a filler episode, right? Where someone died and some money was paid back. That's it. And I got to the end of it and I was like, wow, I can't believe that he killed this guy's wife. And she's like, what are you saying? It was stated immediately that she had a stroke. <laughs> and then I go, fuck off. He killed it. And she's like, how would that happen? They weren't in the same room. I'm like, it was obviously implied. I look at the summary and it didn't happen. And I, and I was like, oh, that's actually, I was just like not able to pay attention. That's so, so, you know, the OxyContin might even make me smarter. It might balance out, you know, like who's like, like what, what's going to happen in my brain if I'm sleeping well, but I'm also just downing fucking tablespoons of Oxy. I might, I might just turn into, you know what might happen? I might start listening to like the Bradley Martin podcast. You know, I'll just really reach a real like lukewarm IQ, <laughs> room temperature IQ moment of like, fuck, let, maybe I'll, let's chuck on the soccer. I wonder who's going to win. So anyway, Doja Cat's in trouble. <laughs> Have you seen all this Doja Cat shit? I haven't. You haven't? So I, she's, I don't know. People go, oh, she's canceled. She's in so much trouble. Here's what she did. She, um, I need to read exactly what she said because I don't want to misquote her, okay? Um, Doja Cat. Now, I, now, right away, before we get into this, there's a lot of opinions that are going to be had about this from the listener, you the listener, and I would love to know your opinion in the comments, actually. Um, the the listener and and from you, Keelan, and even from me, I'm going to have some opinions on this. But the, uh, the craziest part... You know, I'll tell you the craziest part of all of this at the end, okay? So here's what she, uh, what she said. So she said, um, okay, well, I need a fucking... Keelan's taking photos of my face to remember me by. <laughs> um, all right. Where is this shit? See, if I was on Armadaphanil, I would have had this shit up in two seconds. Um, Would you like me to find it? Man, you want? Yeah, give it a go. Okay. All right. So she, she, <laughs> she wrote, I found it. Okay, she wrote, my fans don't name themselves shit. If you call yourself a kitten or fucking kittens with a Z, that means you need to get off your phone and get a job and help your parents with the house. <laughs> <laughs> Which I love. And they were calling themselves that because she showed up to what the Met Gala, Met Gala with like makeup on, dressed as a cat. So they start, all of their fucking insane fans start calling themselves kittens. They give themselves a name and they start fucking acting fanatically um, about it. And uh, that's great. Okay. And that's so true. Now, uh, then, where is this? Okay. Then, she, then someone goes, I want to hear you say, I do love you guys, as usual, you say to your fans. Like, she's told a joke of them, but they're like, oh, yeah, but, like, you love us. And she goes, I don't, though, because I don't even know you all. Queen. Great. Loving it. And then another person says, uh, and we don't know you, but we've supported you through thick and thin. Mind you, you'd be nothing without us. You'd be working at a grocery store making songs on fucking garage band, Mitch, Miss High School Dropout. And she said, nobody forced you. I don't know why you're talking to me like you're my mother, bitch. You sound like a crazy <laughs> person. <laughs> and dude, she lost, uh, I think it was 250,000 followers on Instagram over that. And people are saying, 
fuck her. She's done. She hates her fans. And I read that and I'm a person, I have fans. I agree a hundred percent. I don't love any of you. I love that I have this opportunity to entertain you and I appreciate you so much. I don't love any of you motherfuckers. Love? I don't love you. And, and you know what? You don't love me. Mm. That's what she's, she's saying. You don't, you, you might love my comedy, right? You might really, really enjoy my work. You might love Doja Cat's music. You don't fucking know the bitch and she doesn't know you. What she's doing is she's going, hey, don't fucking obsess over me to the point where uh, your whole personality is supporting me. Like all those Stan accounts and all those fucking tweets and, and creating accounts, which by the way is obviously hugely beneficial for her business and her dream. And that's amazing that people like her so much that they want to do that. But it's also like, if you're obsessing that much over somebody else who you've never met and never will, is that not fucking weird as like come to my show, buy a t-shirt and I am so fucking appreciative of that. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Cause I appreciate that. I know what it's like to go to work and save up your money and buy a ticket and, and fucking get a babysitter for the kids or spend all that money traveling to the venue and paying for parking or train tickets or food when you're there. And, uh, and, and just, you know, the cost of being tired the next day. Like that's such a huge, beautiful, incredible, am amazing effort. And I, I am so appreciative of that, but that doesn't make me love you. <laughs> what? There's 300 people there. I got, I love you all. You all love me. No, you don't. You think I'm really funny. And, uh, and maybe you even like me personally. Well, not you like who, who, uh, I, who, who I am when I say this shit and I tell my jokes. But we're not in a relationship, you know? I don't know what's so controversial about that. But yeah, she lost like 250,000 followers and everyone's everyone's calling her like unappreciative and uh, and ungrateful and like a brat and shit like that. And it's like, if anything, uh, her going, oh, I don't love you. And then them going, fuck you. You're, you'd be nothing without us and all this kind of shit. And it's like, well, you're a cunt. You're an entitled cunt. Like not only do they feel like uh, ownership over her, like if you don't act a certain way, like personally, like like that's that's beyond like, because it's totally legitimate. Like if you uh, like her music and then she starts releasing shit stuff, it's not controlling to be like oh, I don't like it anymore. That's fine. But if if she if you disagree with the way that she views how personally attached to you and millions of other people she is that's weird as fuck like you have to love me i don't know you bro you live in peru <laughs> never met you you know mm. chances are what i've got six hundred thousand followers on youtube uh another 350 maybe on tiktok and then like 69 nice thousand on instagram how many of them do you reckon have like uh, have like killed a dog, like on purpose? Probably a couple. I don't love them. Oh you know, just a numbers game. Yeah, yeah you know. Yeah, you're right. How many? How many of those people were were like drink driving and they took out like a mother of three? Like it's it's possible. And I don't love them, but but look, here's what I'm saying: if if you're listening to this, you right now, and you and and you're feeling maybe a little insecure, and you think that. I don't love you. Of course, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about all of the other fans, <laughs> not you. I love you and you know who you are and I only love you, but all these other free Ugh. and you know who you are. How's that? Just sowing a bit of dissonance in the fan base of like, fuck, oh, am I the, you are. Which, whichever one of those groups you thought you're in, that's the one you're in. But you know, like, I can't love more than like, I mean, you got your parents if you're lucky and your grandparents if you're even luckier and then some siblings and some really close friends and, and a partner and kids. 
And I gotta love a hundred thousand cunts too? No, it's impossible. Um, so I just think that's really funny from her of just to go, she's got to be one of the first like super, super famous, big female celebrities as well to go, no, actually fuck all the hardcores, fuck all of them. <laughs> Imagine if Taylor Swift did that, oh, no. you know, like if, if all those fans that are outside the arena, cause they couldn't get tickets, not for lack of trying, you know, they, they cried when they couldn't get tickets and thought, you know, what, we're going to show up in the car park and we're going to dance to the echo that we can hear from the arena. Imagine if she just said on the mic and to all those fucking broke bitches in the car park, fuck you. I mean, cars would start burning. <laughs> That'd be great. I would love to see that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Do you have to love your fans? No, I think you're right. I think your take is correct. I think uh, there's, there's, I think like it's, it's certainly like a, a huge respect and a huge appreciation for your audience. Cause it's so amazing. And it's, and I'm so fucking lucky and blessed and it's incredible. Cause I know what it's like to have no money. And I know what it's like to have like a job that I hated and shit like that. And I'm so lucky that I don't have to do that. And I get to live my dream and the, the part that, that you play uh, in that is, is monumental. If, if you spent five bucks on my comedy special or if you've shared a video for free or if you've, you know, bought the special, or bought a ticket or a T-shirt, like that's like unbelievably fucking massive. I mean, you paid for my surgery. Amazing. But it doesn't make me want to like walk down the aisle and give you a big kiss, you know? I'm like, wow, how amazing. And also it's like, uh, especially I feel like for... For musicians, maybe it's a little bit different for people who do podcasts because I feel like you can, like the people that I listen to, I feel like I know them a lot better than I do my my favorite musicians, right? Even the musicians that write very intimate songs, I feel like I know my podcasters that I listen to better. So I feel like I can I have a more bigger attachment to them. But like with music, it's like, well, how could you, you know, like I put out a good song and you liked it. Uh, and uh, you bought a t-shirt and everyone's happy. If you love someone you've never met, you're the problem. You know, and I have people tell me like, not all the time, but like it does happen every couple shows of like, oh man, you, you fucking changed my life and you did this for me and you helped me so much. And that's, that's true. I think that does happen where, cause I know that, I, you know, I've listened to people who have done that for me. Um, and, uh, I know that's real, but still we're not in love. You know, you can do something amazing for someone. And like, like if you win the lottery, do you love the, the CEO of Tats Lotto? No. Don't think so. You, you're like, fuck, cool. Anyway, I just think it's really funny. I hope she goes further. I hope she goes, uh, and to anyone who fucking plays my music, you're a bitch. That'd be good. See, that's too much. I like the, cause you know what, you know what that, what she did saying that putting that nice little separation between you and audience, especially for women. Do you know what that does? That stops chicks from getting killed <laughs> because it's that fucking hectic parasocial relationship, especially with like female streamers and shit. Some dude watching you eight hours a day, just fucking existing. You think you're, you're, you're her girlfriend. Like that type of shit, ha not having that separation, it's a fucking mental illness. Like just getting so obsessed with, with someone you've never met and who doesn't know you exist and going, oh, they love me like I love them. Because that's what this is. It's hurt feelings because, oh, I love you so fucking much that you must feel that way about me. And then she goes, uh... I, I like it when you, when you come to shows and listen to my music, that's cool. But like, I don't know who, who you are. Then it's like, you hurt me. And 250,000 people did that. Like to me, when, when I see such a huge reaction like that, I'm like, that's gotta be dangerous. <laughs> you know, like I saw a video of uh, Taylor Swift. Like, I think it was this week. She was just on a, going on a date somewhere to a restaurant and Fuck, man, it looked like 3,000 people showed up out front. Mm. And, like, there's 10 security guards. There's no cops because it just happened immediately. And the police had to close down all the roads. The road, like, that's shit where, like, she, 
people have such an unhealthy obsession with Taylor Swift. Like if you're showing up to see Taylor Swift like enter and leave a restaurant, you're fucking nuts. And people are doing that. And that's the shit where you don't even realize that that could cause a death on the road. Yeah. Because you're speeding to go to the fucking restaurant and so are so many other people and the roads aren't built for that much traffic going to one place. Or that's how there's a crush because obviously it's not an event space so it's not like an arena. It's not built with people getting crushed to death in mind. It's fucking crazy. I'm every, every day I hear a story like this, I'm so unbelievably grateful to be a comedian because we don't get that famous. It's not possible. Kevin Hart is like as big as you get. But even then, like no one's showing up out the front of Kevin Hart's fucking arena to listen to the echo of the jokes. And like, could you imagine that if you were in an apartment building outside Rod Laver Arena and then there's 3,000 people going, ah, ha, 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 ha. trying to get Kevin to hear their laughter. Does anyone here like sport? Me, I do. <laughs> you've you've lost. If you're showing up in a in a in a car park to listen to Taylor Swift's echo come out of the top of an arena that you couldn't get tickets for, you need a hobby. Anyway, guys, I think we might end um, end the podcast. Radio Mike's doing a listening party when for Taylor what? Swift is in town. So I'm going to go to his house and we're going to have a barbecue. And we're going to listen to Taylor Swift. Oh, he lives near the arena. He lives near. What's the his MCG? exact address? Don't say it. Um, <laughs> really close to saying it. That That's less lame because he's there anyway. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, but I'm going to his house to listen into the echo. That's weird. <laughs> but it's not as weird as sitting in a car park because at least yeah. you're like, oh, there's tap water. <laughs> you know, like at least there's like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a couch. And, and, uh, and if it sucks, you can close the window. Really quick before you wrap, um, we should do predictions because you're going to be out of it for like two months. Yeah, true. Should we? Uh, can you get the instrumental ready for me? Um, so <laughs> before I wrap, anyway, predictions <laughs> of what of just what I <laughs> fuck. If I die on that table, that's that's going to really affect my legacy. That joke. Well, there's 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 that. Do you think you'll die? Uh, I don't think so. It's possible, but it's very unlikely. Yep. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it, it's on the cards. And as promised years ago, I'll just keep uploading different versions of your podcast. Oh, that's true. Yeah, so we should get this out of the way. If I do die, God forbid, I probably won't. But, but, but if I do, um, firstly, um, uh, oh, man. I have the funniest thing to say, but I but my brain is so slow that I can't think of what I need to say. Okay, let's rewind that back. Okay, let's get one thing straight. If if I do die, God forbid, hopefully I don't. Firstly, if I do die, my surgeon's name is Dr. Sam Verko. Secondly, uh, <laughs> and I and I've heard he's great. Um, but anyway, uh, if uh. If I do die, I want everyone to pretend that I'm still alive. I don't. I don't want. I want Operation Cognitive Dissonance. Don't ever let my mum know. All right. I want everyone to fucking. If if my brother posts on Instagram a, a photo of me and saying I miss you so much, even if it's five year, if it's on the five year anniversary of my death, right? If it's twenty fucking thirty two, I don't care. You argue with that motherfucker. He's not dead. I saw him down the shops last week. I'm listening to his podcast at the gym right now. He's not dead. <laughs> That's funny. Mum won't find it funny. And 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 also she'll she she won't ever come to understand it. But that's <laughs> That's a sacrifice that I'm willing to make. Um all right, so predictions. So, so, so what are we what are we talking here? Because um, I'm going to be. I, so even even if I survive, right, slim chance. But if I survive this, um, I I'm probably not going to be able to do a podcast. I don't know, man. It could be two months. At, at least not for a month, but six eight weeks. Who knows? We'll make make a prediction. Let's say two months from now. Okay. All right, in the next two months. What's going to happen? Who's who's going to win, Logan Paul or Dylan Dennis? Dylan Dennis is winning this for sure because he's in Logan's head. Okay. All of this stuff, like 
here's a better prediction. <laughs> is Logan going to bring his fiance to the fight? I'm going to say no. He should, but I don't think he will because I don't think he can handle the noise. Okay. Um, and so Trump's has been indicted for the fourth time. How many more times will he be indicted by the time you come back? When was the last time he was indicted? The other day. Oh, before yeah, that? before that. A week ago. Oh, okay. So it is, it's possible there could be a few more. There's, there's potentially nine more indictments to come. I'm going to say there's, <laughs> there's by, the, by the time I'm back, there's going to be maximum two more. Pro I'm leaning towards there's going to be one more uh, indictment. I will say, though, that that mugshot's going to be on every single T-shirt you see for the next six months anywhere you go. Online, real life, it's going to be fucking everywhere. And I'm buying one. Um, okay. I think that's kind of it. That's all the big trendy stuff at the moment. How, how about we, you and I make a prediction? Yeah. And, and also the comment section, I would love for you guys to know. Uh, currently, on the scale of attractiveness right now, where am I sitting? Ignore the braces, all right? Where am I sitting? Like a seven, eight. An eight? That's a bit high. I think it's... Mm. Imagine you see me at the supermarket. Seven. Good lighting supermarket. My, my auntie saw you at Robinson's bookstore the other day. Oh, really? And she was too nervous to say anything. Ask her what she would rate me. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, Robinson's bookstore. It's like an independent bookstore. It's got good lighting. Uh, di disregard the fact that I'm looking at books because you might find bookish people attractive or boring. Just consider I'm buying a, a, a gift for someone else. Seven. I would say, I'm going to say a seven Okay. now. I think when you come back, you'll be a five and then in six months, you'll be a ten. After the swelling's gone down. Really wrong. When I, after surgery, I'm going to be a two. <laughs> I'm going to look like. Being generous. Have you, have you seen those videos where uh, someone keeps wrapping a, a rubber bands around a water melon <laughs> until they fucking explode? That's literally going to be me. Yeah. Covered in rubber bands, red shit going everywhere. <laughs> Head exploding. So yeah, I think I'm going to go from a seven to a two. Uh, cause, cause a one, you don't see a one, you know, you see a one getting loaded into an ambulance. Two is about as low as an able-bodied person goes. Uh, it, I'm going to go from a seven down to a two. And then I think I could hit a nine. A 10 is, is, yeah. is like legless in Lord of the Rings with the makeup and the lighting. It's impossible. You've never seen a 10 in your life. Have you ever seen a 10? Yeah. Joseph Green. I don't know. He's like, he's really handsome. I wouldn't say he's a 10. No, I'm joking. Um, no, I don't think so. He's a nine. I don't think I've ever seen a 10 in real life. Yeah, you'll be a nine and then your ticket sales will plummet because you're too handsome. See that, that could have, it could have a negative impact. Although you look at comedian Matt Reif, he's really good looking and he's, I w he's really funny. He's hilarious and his crowd work and his stand up is really good. If I were blind, I would be a fan. But what I'm so I'm not discrediting his stand up because it's so good. But what I'm saying is he's so handsome that he eclipses his stand up, mm. which is really good. Mm. Um, so maybe that'll be me. So maybe that could be good. Or maybe maybe I'll have to really lift the stand up. Oh, you know what? You know what I'm going to be? Have you ever met uh, a really beautiful girl? Uh, who used to be really fat, and you're like, oh, my God, how did you get this good personality? Yeah. That's going to be me. So I might be an, I might go up to an eight and a half, but I'll have, a, I'll have like a five's personality because I think we can all agree that while I am a seven now, go back to 2014, we're touching fives. All right. I, I <laughs> on a serious note, uh, I am very, very thankful for your support. Um, especially the people that are sticking with me on Patreon through this, because I, I, I won't be able to make anything. Uh, and, uh, Patreon is, is literally my only source of income and it all goes to like food and fucking 
syringes and medical equipment and uh, and recovery gear and shit like that that's very expensive. So thank you so much. Um, I don't love you, but I really, really do appreciate it. And I will be back when I'm ready. I'm not going to put a timeline on it like I did last time. I'm not going to fucking content create my way through my recovery. Uh, I, I will say that I will be back when I am healthy enough to do so. But what I can promise you is, uh, is I'm actually, this is actually going to make me well. Cause I know that the first one was such a fucking hassle and a detriment and, and, and all this kind of stuff. Uh, but it didn't make me feel like it felt like it wasn't worth it because it just makes the second one possible, which I've said so many fucking times, but honestly, dude, I am so fucking excited to stop talking about it. Mm. I'm so over it. I'm yeah. so over talking about being sick and talking about these surgeries and all this many millimeters and look at my teeth and the expander. And, oh, I'm so fucking excited to be over it. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to do what I should have done uh, with the first surgery is I'm just going to, I'm just going to recover and I'm going to be sick and I'm going to heal and I'm going to get better. And when I do come back, I'm, I'm going to be better. I'm ex so excited. I'm so fucking over this. I can't fucking wait. Like, uh, I, I feel so awful and tired and sick and it's, it's almost over four days. I'm excited. So I'll see you guys on the other end of it. Thank you so much for listening and for dealing with six spears and for having so much compassion and understanding. Uh, because yeah, man, I don't think many other people could not upload a YouTube video for six months mm. and still have all of these people around me. So I, uh, I'm so fucking appreciative of every single one of you. And I don't love any of you, but that's okay because we have a healthy relationship. <laughs> so thank you so much. I will see you when I'm well. If you want to track my recovery, I will post a couple of photos and stuff on Instagram as we go, just to confirm that I that I do survive it. Um, but, but, uh, but yeah, thanks so much, guys. I appreciate you. I will see you when I do. I hope you have a shit one. Anything to say, Keelan? No. Bye. <laughs>